I'm Jason Jackson. I'm the wetland, statewide wetland program coordinator for our, the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission. I took cover the entire state on our waterfowl slash wetland habitat. Uh, that includes bottomland hardwood uh, communities as well as our moist soil uh, program. I was contacted to come uh, view this property with Daniel Greenfield and Mr. Lacey uh, to make recommendations on waterfowl habitat improvements. We rode around the property and seen that he had several niches that waterfowl need, needs, shrub scrub, bottomland hardwood community, ag, and some moist soil potential. Um, he had not tapped that resource uh, at this point. And the moist soil component was the lower lying areas of his fields um, that was problematic to really produce a crop in, which led for a great compromise to where we could grow some duck food. So in some situations, um, he had some native vegetation, which consisted of some native barnyard grass and sprinkle top already growing. We let those go and or fertilize some of those spots with um, uh, rainfall uh, on the horizon. In some spots, we sprayed undesirable weeds such as coffee beans and cocoa burrs to promote the desirable species that we we're wanting for waterfowl forage. And, and then in some places, we didn't have anything growing and we broadcast it uh, or we planted some Japanese millet and kind of forced its hand to propagate something good. Uh, with that said, he's doing all he can to have all the forage he can on the property uh, on sites at flood, um, have a little bit of controllable um, um, capabilities there. So on that note, um, the water regime that we had talked about with Mr. Lacey was kind of a staggered flooding type event where if you have a few impoundments, slowly bring up uh, impoundments throughout the year to where you keep offering new food on the property. And what this does is encourages ducks to continue to use the property other than only having stagnated soils or stagnated impoundments to utilize. We do need to all remember, most of us chase dabbling ducks, or we're seeking dabbling ducks, and we need to remember that they only forage in about 18 inches of water and less. So by stagger flooding a low-lying area, you can utilize the whole foraging uh, capability of that impoundment by slowly bumping it up the hill. And of course, doing the same on the uh, drawdown of that said area if you have a good water control structure in there. Um, this will encourage desirable native uh, moist soil type communities and then you, thus eliminating you from having to do a whole lot of planting work and disking work. Um, some sites will have to be disturbed as we get into the third or fourth year of growing, uh, but uh, by kind of rotating around on the farm, if you have a whole lot of property that doesn't force you to do a whole lot in one year. On the bottomland hardwood community here on Mr. Lacey's property, we did see um, some of the components, the basal area of that forest was a little thick and the recommendation was made to thin that down, which puts more sunlight on the ground, which increases the food side, the foraging side of that bottomland hardwood community. This means that we have some native plants, some moist soil growing in it, as well as promoting that moist soil community promotes invertebrates, which invertebrates lead to straight protein, which is what ducks have or ducks need to grow feathers. So <clears throat> by thinning down the bottomland hardwood community, we will have enhanced that little section to really produce a lot more uh, bugs and seeds. He had soybeans on a lot of his property as well as some rice fields. And on the rice fields, um, they serve as a surrogate wetland. So there's a lot of opportunity there. Stubble row, do a little fire, do nothing, and kind of stagger flood the uh, structure there to where you have both the bug component, you have some residual seeds left in there, and um, it doesn't inhibit the farmer from a whole lot. Arkansas Game and Fish pursued a grant. We called it W Rice Program. This is where we pursued 3,700 acres in this past year of rice fields within 10 miles of a waterfowl WMA. In these fields, we were able to um, 
retain the hunting rights and have a permitted draw only on the weekends. So these properties were a rest area during the week and then uh, a nice huntable spot for um, the public on the weekends. Um, this is really a new thing that this is our third year doing it, but this is the biggest year for us and we will continue that for two more years at minimum. So we're trying to do all we can to put more property, more wetland habitat on the landscape for our waterfowl.